Hello grade sevens. I'm Helen and that means we've got another exciting natural sciences lesson for you today. What are we focusing on? Well we're still looking at our theme of insulation but today we're going to focus on how animals insulate themselves. So let's look at this situation. There are many animals that live in extremely cold environments. So we have the polar bear that lives at the North Pole. We have our penguins that live at the South Pole. And we know that they are surrounded by icy cold water and mountains of ice. And how do they keep themselves warm? Well, let's go back to our theory and look again at heat energy transfers and insulation. We know that insulation reduces or slows down the rate at which energy is transferred between objects of different temperature. So we know that we've got a hot object with a high temperature, we've got a cold object with a low temperature, and heat energy is transferred from the hot object to the cold object. So here we've got our polar bear. The polar bear is the hot object. The water that he's about to jump into is our cold object. The penguin is our hot object and the ice on which the penguin is standing is the cold object. So we have to somehow use insulation to slow down or even, if possible, stop that transfer of heat energy. How are animals insulated against the heat loss? Well, we're going to have to see that something must stand between the body of the polar bear and the icy water and something must stand between the body of the penguin and the ice on which the penguin is standing. So let's explore insulation in animals. Now animals that live in very cold climates insulate themselves with a number of adaptations. Like I said, the animal is the hot object and the surroundings are the cold objects. And we need to create a barrier between the hot and the cold object to prevent the transfer of heat. So what we're looking at is something to prevent the transfer of heat energy from the polar bear to the ice. We need to place a barrier of insulating material to prevent heat transfer. So that's what we're looking at. So we've got to see what is the barrier between the body of the polar bear and the ice. And of course, we've got a number of adaptations and we're going to look at two of them today. We're going to look at something called blubber and we're going to look at something called fur. So let's start off learning all about blubber. Whales and other marine animals live their entire life in icy oceans. This is what we call a beluga whale and this is a seal and of course we've also got walruses and these animals are lying on the ice or swimming in the icy water. They need to keep that heat energy in their bodies. Blubber is a very thick layer of fat, right, that is beneath the skin and above the muscles. So let's have a look. We've got our animal's muscle and that is where we've got the blood flowing through the muscles and that is what we need to keep hot. So Normally, for example, in you and in me, we have our skin directly on top of that. But that's not the case with polar animals. They have a very thick layer of fat. And it's not just normal fat. It is extremely, extremely 
dense fat. And we call that fat blubber. Then they have the skin. And then here we have the cold environment. And this very dense, thick, thick, thick layer of blubber helps to prevent heat transfer from the warm, hot body to the cold sea or the cold ice. Our walrus is asking an interesting question here. Does my blubber make me look fat? Well, the blubber also has another function. When times are tough and food is very rare and there's not a lot of fish floating around or swimming around or there are not a lot of animals on the ice for the walrus to eat, we are seeing that these polar animals are able to metabolize their fat and use their own fat for food. So we'll see that an animal at the end of uh, a long cold season will have less blubber than an animal at the beginning of the very cold winter season because the blubber builds up over time and then the blubber gets metabolized away as food. So blubber is an extremely important adaptation. You can have a look at this yourself. You can make a blubber glove. And what you can do is you can Hold your hand, put a, I think put a glove on it and smear a lot of fat or margarine or even butter on your hand and an ordinary, a glove and you can put a block of ice onto the margarine hand and a block of ice onto the plain hand and then you can feel. Can you feel the ice with the blubber <laughs> or your margarine or do you feel the ice more without an insulating layer? Now that's only a thin layer of margarine. Imagine what a very thick layer of blubber would do. But blubber isn't the only way. Arctic or Antarctic animals keep themselves warm. Let's think about fur. So polar bears do have blubber, but they also have fur, the same as arctic wolves. So the fur of polar bears and wolves is very dense, very, very thick. And here comes the secret, it's layered with different kinds of hair and all of these different kinds of hair work together to make a thick layer of insulation right next to the skin. So once again, we have our muscle layer, which is the hot object with the blood flowing in it. There's some blubber in polar bears and slightly different fat in wolves. Then we've got our skin layer and the skin produces hairs. We've got a very thick, dense, what we call under fur. It's very soft. It's very closely packed together, both against the skin and the hairs themselves are closely packed against each other. But the important thing about these hairs is that there are pockets of air in them. And the pockets of air trap the heat energy and keep that heat energy close to the skin of the animal. But then there is the top coat and here we see long hairs projecting out into the top coat. They are oily or water repellent and they then prevent the coldness from sucking out the heat energy because the hair, this hair at the bottom, doesn't get wet. Now there's an extra trick that polar bears have. Polar bears are so well insulated that you can't even spot them with night vision goggles. Now night vision goggles pick up radiated heat and the polar bear's outer fur is in fact at the same temperature as the surroundings. 
polar bears don't transfer heat from their bodies to the environment at all. So they have found a way of not just slowing down the heat transfer, but blocking that heat transfer altogether. And here is their extra little trick. Their longer hairs that are up into this section of the coat, they are oily and water repellent, but although the hair looks white, the hairs are in fact transparent and hollow. And thus, we've got these hollow transparent hairs trapping another layer of air in this outer coat, which is a double form of insulation. So whilst we see the polar bear lying on the ice and looking as though, wow, that must be very cold. In fact, the polar bear is at the same temperature as its surroundings. So it doesn't lose heat at all. In fact, it might want to put its paws down onto the cold um, iciness in order to transfer some of that heat energy away if it even gets too hot. Now the penguins of course are found at the South Pole. They are Antarctic animals and they are birds so they don't have hair but they're insulated by their feathers in exactly the same way that the hair insulates mammals. We've got our muscle, we've got a layer of fat, we've got the skin, and then, just like the dense under fur, we have down feathers, little feathers that are soft and compressed against the skin. Quite a thick layer of them. And they are also filled with pockets of air. And so they trap a lovely warm insulating layer of air right next to the skin of the penguin. And then like those top fur coats in the mammals, they have top feathers. These feathers are longer feathers. And here you can see them in the photograph. We can see these feathers that are lying on top of the down feathers. They are longer and they are also very oily and therefore water repellent. And we can often see how the penguins groom themselves or preen themselves by using their beaks against their oil gland and smearing that oil or that fat all over their feathers to keep them nice and warm. But what about you? When you go into a cold environment, what do you do? Well, you copy what you see in the animals that live naturally in those environments because humans do not have long body hair and dense amounts of blubber or fat. So you need to copy what you see happening in all of these polar animals as well. So you're going to wear underclothes that are soft and dense and they're going to trap a layer of air close to your skin. You're then going to put an outer coat on of something that is going to be possibly a plastic component that is going to be waterproof so that we're not going to have coldness and wetness penetrating down to your skin. You might find in some of these jackets that there is down inside the jacket, either natural feather down or an artificial or synthetic substance that is packed between the inner and the outer layer of your coat to keep you warm. You're going to wear nice socks as well as boots and insulating fabrics around your face and on your hands. Your gloves are going to be fur lined or lined with some synthetic substance that acts like an undercoat or down feathers. So when humans go into very icy regions, what they do is copy the structure of that insulating layer that we find in polar animals that keep them warm. So keep yourselves warm and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye bye.